And I've been preaching about the Holy Ghost for the last couple of weeks. Uh, but today is a spin on my message. Uh, and, it, and the title if I were to put on today's message would be uh, Holy Lessons to Live By. Amen. Look at somebody said, there are holy lessons, holy lessons to live by. Look to somebody else and said, there are holy lessons to live by. You know, every day in our life, we learn something new. Every day we absorb things that are different. Uh, and we learn some very valuable lessons. It's important that you learn things and, uh, uh, and meditate on the things that you learn. Why did this happen to me? Why is it? It's coming my way. Why is it taking place in my life? Why is things uh, transpiring like this? Why am I repeating the same trial or the same troubles that I have? It's because God really wants you to get it. Amen. God really wants you to comprehend uh, what's going on in your life. Amen? Amen? And if you stop and meditate on it for a moment and absorb it, you will find out that God is trying to get you to receive some special instruction. Amen. If I can say holy instruction, they come from the holy deaths of God. Somebody say amen. amen. Timothy, who was a protege, uh, an understudy of Apostle Paul, uh, a young man that, that was well uh, known and well loved by Paul, but, but he had a work that was set before him. This work that was set before him, he had to learn some holy lessons when you hit the ground running. Me and you every day got to learn something. Amen. Amen. Sometimes we don't like change, but change is good. Because sometimes change brings about the reality of what God is really trying to get through to you. I think everybody in this room want to die and go to heaven. Somebody say amen. I think that God wants everybody in this room to die and go to heaven. Oh, come on, somebody. But we have to learn these holy lessons while we're here. Amen. Now, come on, somebody. You can dance last night. You can praise the Lord with me today. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. Well, somebody say amen. amen. I ain't ashamed to say, Lord, forgive me if I made the wrong step, but I'm back on the scene. Amen. And I give God the praise amen. and give God the glory. Amen. amen. What a lesson to be learned in life. So many wonderful lessons. Our mothers, our fathers, our brothers and our sisters, our friends, our relatives, our teachers, our instructors, our preachers and our pastors, those in authority on our job, try to instruct us in the right way. Well, let me tell you something about learning lessons and even include holy lessons. If you know something already, you don't have to open your mouth and say, I already know that. Keep your mouth shut and you might learn even more than what you know. I don't think y'all like that, but that's okay. Now, whether it comes out ragged or come out straight, I'm going to still preach it. Amen? Amen? Let us see what Paul is trying to say to Timothy in chapter, 1 Timothy chapter 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4. Now, it's important that you understand what Paul was trying to say to Timothy because, you know, we're living in a day where there are all kind of demons that are running the land. Yes. When I say not in charge, but they're running through the land. Yes. There's spirits all over the place. They're attacking you and they're attacking me. They don't wait until you wake up. They attack you in your sleep. Come on, somebody. Now, Paul said to Timothy in chapter 4, verse 1, Now the spirits speak expressly that in the latter times some have walked away or departed from the faith. How did they get walking away? How did they get drawn away? Because they were giving heed or taking notice to seducing spirits. There are spirits that will pull you off your mark. There are spirits that will draw you away and tell you, it's all right, Reverend Watkins ain't around. But beware because Paul tells Timothy, that they're not only seducing spirits, but you might not be aware there are doctrines of demons. There are doctrines of devil where they will use the tradition of man to bring about a lawlessness that's in the land. Oh, come on, somebody. I'm going to get heavy and deep this morning, but I'm going to break it down for you. He said in verse 2, speaking lies and hypocrisy. No one wants to be called a hypocrite. 
but you got to call it like you see it. Yes. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience sealed yes. with a hard eye. Yes. Oh my God, if you've never been burned before, you ain't going to have no idea what I'm talking about. Yes. You ever got burned by the heat of a flame? Yes. Or been stenched by the heat that came out of the oven? You ever heard a little barbecue grill and felt the heat? that penetrate the flesh right down to the soul. You ever been burnt by a match or burnt by a hot iron? My God, can you imagine your conscience being sealed with a hot iron? Meaning having no conscience and not mindful of what God is doing. We are living in the last days. Let us learn as many holy lessons as we possibly can. Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meat, which God had created to be received with thanksgiving Amen. of them which believe and know the truth. Amen. For every creature of God is good. Yeah. And nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. Amen. Anytime you pick up something to eat, you have to try number first five. You have to apply number verse 5. Yes. For it is sanctified by the word, and it is sanctified through by prayer. Yes. You don't know what folks doing with your food in the back room. Yes. You eat out and say, I want this well done. Yes. They get mad, and the, and the way to look at you with a cross eye, yes. they might drop your meat on the floor. Yes. Oh, don't y'all get mad with me now. Yes. You got to be on high alert today. The same way that America is on high alert for terrorism, we got to be on high alert for the doctrines of demons. Amen. People today are preaching and teaching everything else except the word of God. Amen. They're watering it down and they're putting anything in there and they want you to receive it even though they're adding to it. Amen. But let us not be deceived. Every devil be a liar, every man be a liar, but let God's word be true. He said in verse 6, if thou put the brethren in remembrance, the word of God blessed is blessed. Whatever is sanctified is sanctified. You become to be, uh, uh, put in remembrance of these things. Thou shalt be a good minister, a good evangelist of Jesus Christ, Amen. nourishing up in the word of faith and of good doctrine. Amen. Wherefore, thou hast all tamed. But refuse profane and old wise table. Don't be talking about that old foolishness, especially if it ain't in the word of God. Amen. Wise fable and exercising themselves uh, uh, rather than uh, God. I'm sorry. A uh, wise fable. Let me back up a minute. But refuse profane and old wise fable, exercising themselves rather unto godliness. Amen. And then he goes on even further in verse 8 and says, For bodily exercise... Profit a little. Look at somebody and say, you ought to at least get the little. No exercise won't hurt you. But if you're going to do some real exercise, exercise yourself unto godliness, it is profitable to all things, having promise of the life that now is and that which is to come. you got to exercise your right as a believer. You got to learn these holy lessons, even if it means painful. It may cause someone death in your family, or you might lose someone close to you. But there's a lesson in the music. There's a lesson in the sermon. There's a lesson in the prayer, and a lesson in what you're going through. You got to think through that lesson. That's why it takes time to think through what you're going through. Stay with me now. Be patient with me. He says here, this is a faithful saying in verse 9, and worthy of all acceptance. For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach, because we trust in who? God. You trust in who? God, God is alive. Yes. Uh, we don't know how long God been around. And I don't believe that anybody that ever lived has found God's birth certificate. He don't need a birth certificate. Oh, come on, somebody. God is who he is. And he is what he is. And he said, I am that I am. The great Jehovah. 
the one that will provide all your needs. And if God is dead, somebody need to show me where his grave. God is not dead, but God is alive. Somebody say, God is alive. And he's living within me. Tell somebody say, I can feel God living in you. charge of everything, that all power, all power is in his hands. Oh, my God. Some people want to blame God for this and blame God for that. I'm here to tell you, put the blame on the real character. That devil who's trying to kill you, that devil is trying to destroy you. He wants your walk and he wants your prayer. He wants you to abandon the faith and go about your business doing your own thing. But one day, when it's all said and done, he himself will be cast into the lake of fire. You ain't got to worry about it. It's already a done deal. You ain't got to worry about whether God going to rethink this thing. When God says something, is going to come to pass. Are y'all with me on this? You and I have to learn holy lessons. The devil didn't learn his lesson when he was in heaven. Lucifer, who was the archangel in the presence of God, he was in charge of heaven's choir. He was so beautiful to look upon that God, uh, he blessed him so beautiful that God made him in a beautiful image. But his heart and his spirit got lifted up. And he said, I'm going to be like the most high God. Oh, come on, somebody. And he exalted himself above the throne of God and convinced a third of heaven's angels. Now, this has always disturbed me. And it might not disturb you, but it disturbed me. How are you already created by the creator? Made in a beautiful image. Always in the presence of God. Because of the glory that God gave him. Already in heaven, it don't get no better than that. And yet he rebelled, thinking he can take over God's heaven. You know something had to be wrong with him from the get-go. Something that had to be wrong with his spirit from the very beginning. To fall such a great height. Oh, my God. It's troubling in mind and thought. To think that all we have to do is learn from their holy lesson. To God be the glory for all that he has done. And nothing is above the throne of God. Learn this holy lesson in a very valuable way. And you will find out that God will bless you in all kind of ways. Oh, I don't know if y'all getting this this morning. He says in verse, uh, we're trusting the living God, who is the Savior, in verse 10, of all men, especially for those who believe. You're here today not because you look cute, because you are cute, but you're here today because God saved you. You have to give God the praise. Why, 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 why did he save me? Because he could have picked anybody else up, but, but he picked you out. He saw you coming when you didn't see him. He knew you needed his help long before you called on it. And he knew that you needed to be touched by his Holy Ghost. Everybody say, Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. I need one more touch. One more touch. Huh. These things command, he said, and teach. Verse 12 said, let no man despise thy you, but be thou an example. Amen. How do I be an example? In word, Amen. in character or conversation, Amen. in love or charity, Amen. in spirit, be an example in truth, in faith, Amen. 
and impurity. Yeah. Oh, come on, somebody. Yeah. Today, people that figure they can wear anything, say anything, yeah. do anything, yeah. and thank God we pleased with the thing. I'm here to tell you the devil is a liar again. Yeah. See, when you get in the habit of telling the devil he's a liar, it comes to be second nature to you. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. See, some of y'all don't want to call the devil a liar. Because if you're in a cahoots with the lie, come on, somebody, he's going to mess you up. Right. I'm breaking it down, and then I'm going to get deep in the message. Verse 11 says, uh, verse 3, till I come, he says, till I come, give attendance unto reading, studying, exhortation, and to doctrine. Know what sound doctrine is. Not some watered-down version of some man that look good or dress good or appear on the outward appearance or have some philosophy. Don't go for that hokey doke. You better know the Bible for yourself. You better read it for yourself so the pastor walk and come out wrong, you'll be able to say, Pastor, that ain't what the word said. Amen. Oh, come on, somebody. Amen. Today, we just take whatever somebody said on the radio, the magazine, the TV, the airway, YouTube, Twitter, and think it's the gospel truth. Amen. You better know God's word for yourself. Amen. There's a holy lesson to be learned Amen. in every area of your life. He said, neglect not the gift that is in thee, which were given to thee by prophecy, with the laying on hands of the Presbyterians. Come on, somebody. Everybody in this room got a gift. Whether you use that gift for God or not is left up to you. But one day when you stand before God, God will ask you, what did you do with the gift and what did you do with the talent and what did you do with my son's name? Oh, come on, somebody. And now one of the most disturbing parts of Scripture is that Jesus said, many will come to me in that last day and ask me. Amen. Oh, come on, somebody. And would ask me, did not I prophesy in your name? Did not I preach in your name? Did not I heal in your name? Did I not deliver in your name? And Jesus will look on and tell them, depart from me. Workers of iniquity, you see, they're a holy lesson to live by. If you want God to get the glory out of your life, you got to remember that gift you got belong to God. Amen. You see, the world want to straddle the fence. That's why you find more people in the world today trying to ride on the platform of the church. They figure, wait a minute now. If we give the church an uh, accolade or a plaque and invite them to our wards, and if I sing a song and throw Jesus in there every now and then, they invite us to ours. You don't understand the devil is trying to get a foothold inside the church. Jesus said that the gates of hell shall not prevail. The gates of hell is going to come up against the church, but they will not prevail. Even the weapons that are carnal in the minds of men, whether it be the locksmith or the goldsmith, whether it be a weapon smith or man that will come up with any kind of weapon, shall not prevail over the people of God. Two more verses. 15 says, meditate. Everybody said meditate. 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 Upon these things. You see, you got to give yourself wholly and wholly to them. That thy profiting may appear to all. People can tell by the way you walk if you're walking right. Well, come on, somebody. You can, you can play church, but keep on playing church. And you're going to learn a holy lesson. Oh, you don't have to say amen. What holy lesson is that God don't play? Oh, come on, somebody. He said, meditate upon these things. And above all things, in verse 16, he says, take heed unto yourself. That means take notice to what you're doing. Pay attention to what you're going through. Look at your life and see if your life line up with the word of God. See if your life line up with what God is really trying to say. 
Many today thinking they can do things and see things and be places and think it's pleasing to God because they're so bitty. Just like Mary and Martha, Mary sat at the feet of Jesus, but Martha was cumbersome. She was worried and troubled about many things, thinking that if she do 101 things, it would be pleasing to God. But Jesus was straightening Mary out, and the holy lesson was, I prefer to sit at the feet of Jesus and listen to what he has to say than to try to do all the things in the world and not be pleasing to man. Look at somebody and say, who are you pleasing? Mm-hmm. If I can't get an amen, let me get a mm-hmm. Give me something. Come on, somebody. Take heed unto thyself and the doctrine. Continue in this gospel. In them, for in doing so, thou shalt both save yourself and them that hear you. Don't you want your loved ones saved? Don't you want to die one day and those who you know serve the Lord die will meet you in heaven one day? Oh, come on, somebody. There may be somebody in heaven that will come up to you that could be a 10th generation family member and say, I've been praying long before you got here. Long before you showed up on the scene. Long before you was a twinkle in your mother's and your daddy's eye. God had you pointed out. There are many holy lessons to learn. When God come to save your household, you got to be in the place. You got to be like Cornelius uh, when he was praying and asking God for power of the Italian band. And God spoke to Peter. While he was on the house start praying, he saw this prayer cloth come down from heaven full of all kinds of creatures and beings that were considered unclean. Spirit spoke to Peter and said, rise, slay, and eat. And Peter said, not so. Sometimes God will put you in a holy, a holy position. And you think uh, because of self-righteousness, I ain't going to do that. But God is trying to teach you a lesson. Don't never say what you ain't going to do. Especially when it comes to dealing with God. Oh, come on, somebody. Don't find yourself in a holy position when, when God said, I got a way of getting you to do it. God got a way of leaning on your heart, tugging on your soul, pulling you into a place where you have to say, yes, Lord. Somebody say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Look at somebody and say, holy lessons to live by. Oh, my God. Cornelius went in there praying, sent some servants down to get uh, Peter. Peter saw this dream, this vision, this trend about three or four, about two or three times. And, and the spirit stole and rise and slept. And he said, not so. I've never eaten and plan to eat nothing unclean. But what he saw had nothing to do with what he was eating. It had something to do with a holy lesson. God got a way of showing you something if you keep your big eyes open. Oh, come on, somebody. You ever wonder why you got two ears and two eyes and one mouth because God wants you to see and hear twice as much you talk about? Oh, y'all didn't like that. I'm sorry if I step on your foot. Come on, somebody. This is the only time I can break bad with all y'all. This is the only time I can preach that and get away with it. Amen. And it ain't me. I'm just giving you what God gave me. God wants you to learn some holy lesson. And sometimes folks step in your toe. Come on, somebody. And it got you to thinking. Come on, somebody. It got your wheels to spinning. Come on, somebody. And you're going up here trying to apex up the life. And you're wondering if I'm ever going to make it. I'm here to tell you if you learn your lesson and learn it good. God got a way of giving you more. Look at somebody and say, what we going to do now? Amen. Cornelius was praying. Peter was praying. One prayer was going up on one side and one prayer was going up on the other side. And they both got to heaven. And God said, I got to solve this issue. God got a way of solving your issues. 
Are y'all with me now? God got a way of dealing with your circumstances and dealing with your position. And I want you to understand something. While Peter was praying on one side and Cornelius on the other, God said, I'll meet him in the middle. God sent the men to Peter. Peter went with the men because God told him to go. He went over there, and when he got there, he knew he was a Jew, and they was a Gentile. Called Cornelius of the Italian band. Oh, come on, somebody. And while he was of the Italian band, the thing got so uh, blessed by him and what he was doing because he learned some real good holy lesson about helping others who need help. Reaching out to others while we were putting on earth to do for others instead of always doing for ourselves. Oh my God. How can you get something from God when your hands are like a fist? I don't know if you want something or if you want to fight me. Come on, somebody. But when your hands are open and you're reaching out to others and you're trying to touch others, God telling you you're blessed to give, more blessed to give than to receive. There's nothing wrong with receiving, but before God can give it to you, you got to learn to give it away. Look at somebody and say, you can't take it with you. I've yet to feel, I've yet, Junior, to preach a funeral. Well, behind the hearse, it's a U-Haul. I've yet to preach a funeral. Oh, come on, somebody. I've done a lot of funerals. Come on, somebody. And if I don't do no more, I don't have no problem. I've seen people take scratch tickets and slip them down in the casket. As if the person gonna sit up and scratch him. Okay, y'all don't wanna hear that kind of preaching. I've seen a whole lot of stuff y'all don't think I've seen. Once you leave here, look at somebody and say, that's it. Until the judgment. It's appointed unto man once to die, and after death, there's going to be a judgment. And everybody in this room will stand before God all by himself. It won't be nobody go man by except for Jesus Christ and him crucified. He's the only one that paid the price in full that you might have salvation through his holy name. Reach over and tell somebody, say, I hope you're still awake. See, Cornelius got his blessing when Peter showed up. And he understood the vision. Though he was a Jew, though he was uh, 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 blessed by uh, 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 God, and he learned his valuable lesson, but God, although he had the spirit and the power in his life, yet he still had room to learn holy lessons. Look at somebody and say, there's always room, there's always room to, learn holy to learn holy lessons. That's right. Sometimes we, we, you know, we get old. We know it all. I'm going to sound like a broken record from, from the 60s now. We know it all. Nobody can't tell us nothing. Come on, somebody. And just because your head is pointed don't mean you're sharp. You don't have to say amen. Time is running out, saints. Jesus is coming soon. Ready or not or prepared or not, the kingdom of God is at hand. Now, I have to be the one to admit it. I'm not the sharpest tool in the box, but I can be a dull knot and I'll cut every now and then. Oh, come on, somebody. You and I need to understand that God had an appointed time for Peter and appointed a time for Cornelius, and God allowed the blessings to flow both ways when he understood what God clean thou should not call unclean. Amen. When God saves somebody, you and I, that ain't none of your business, that's God's business. Amen. When God heals somebody, it's a blessing to rejoice, but that's God's power. Amen. 
Let's give God the glory. Let's give God the praise. He understood that you weren't supposed to go to a Gentile house. But God is saying, I got the power to save both Jew and Gentile. No longer do I have a favorite people. All people that are under the blood of Jesus Christ and have come to be saved are my people. There are elect of God, there are Jews that are elect of God, there are Gentile. But we that is a household of faith have been grafted in. Somebody had to thank God for being grafted into the main throne of God. It is the throne of God that we're tied into. He said, ask what you will, and it shall be granted unto you. You can find yourself like the, the workers in the vineyard. A lot of people say, I've been saved 30, 40, 50 years. Somebody just got saved. I don't know why they got to get the same thing I got. Look at somebody and say, that's God's holy business. And you should learn a holy lesson. It said this morning, it was never about you and me. It was always about God. Ha. Sometimes people go through life and they got in their head, it's all about me. Life won't revolve. The thing won't happen until I get on the scene. You're going to be left behind. You're going to lose out because there are lessons that you learn when you reach certain stages in life. I don't expect a 20-year-old to think like a 50-year-old, and I don't expect an 80-year-old to act like a 50-year-old. Because you have to be old enough to know better. Come on, somebody. Sometimes you got to get through certain stages in your life, and if you don't want to go through it, you're going to keep repeating it. That's why some folks are grown as they can be, but they act like little children. I ain't talking about being with children and having fun. I'm talking about when you can't have your way. You fall all out. Somebody get a hold of the remote control. Where, where is my remote control? Who then took the key to the house? You'd be surprised. I know what I'm talking about. You know your true nature when you got to deal with issues. There are holy lessons to learn in everything. Think about it for a moment. I don't care how much money you got, clothes you got, food you got, what you got on there, it all was given to you by God. You had to give God the praise for that. You got to give God the glory for that. Well, you know the story. The workers in the vineyard, man went out early in the morning, get vineyard workers. He went at 6, went at 9, went at 11, went at 3, and then he kept going to the marketplace, and these men were standing in the marketplace idle all day. And the, and the owner of the vineyard said, no man to hire you? He says, no man has hired us. He said, come and work in my vineyard yeah. for a penny a day a labor. That didn't sound like much money today, but it was big money back then. Yeah. Well, come on, somebody. Yeah. And those that was in there, and the reason why he wanted all men on hand, all hands on deck to do the work, because the harvest is many. Yeah. I said the harvest is many, but the labor is a few. We got to be about our father's business. You got to reach out to your loved ones, your family, your neighbors, those across the street. Somebody looks like they're losing their mind. They might act a fool when they're around you. But if you start talking about Jesus, if you mention the name of Jesus, you'd be surprised who would straighten up and listen to what you have to say. Because some people act like they never heard the name of Jesus. You hear the name of Jesus? Yeah. They've heard it before. They might not have called on him, but they've heard it before. Yeah. Yeah. Well, these vineyard workers out there just working up something. It was getting late, 11th hour. Those men that came out and worked one hour, oh, my Lord. But they're getting a full day's pay. Yeah. Come on, somebody. 
See, we got annual leave and sick leave now. We get we have a mental health day. Oh, I'm just gonna lay. I'm just gonna go to sleep today. I ain't, even, I ain't even going into work. I'm just gonna. Oh, come on, somebody. I'm tired. Ooh, ooh, Lord have mercy. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Somebody say amen. I know what I'm talking about. You you ain't sick, but you want a mental health day. I like to be on the phone sometimes when y'all call yourself being sick. <coughs> Excuse me, I, I, I got a sore throat. Look, just, just be an adult and say, look, I'm going to take a sick leave day today. I'm not coming in. You ain't got to go through all that dramatic. Some of y'all need an Academy Award when they call to call in sick. You know I had an upset stomach and diarrhea all night. I ain't had no sleep and I'm tired. I don't think I can make it. Just tell them, look, I'm not coming in here today. I'm sick. Look at somebody and say, there's a holy lesson to be learned. Look at somebody and say, all you got to do is be real. Come on, somebody. Well, you know the story. They all came and got their penny, and the one who worked all day thought they should have gotten more than the one who came in the hour. And the guy who worked all day, he's mad with the guy who got paid for one hour. The guy who got one hour said, man, I've been, in, I've been hanging out in the market all day. I got a full day pay. How many like a full day pay without working? How many like a full day pay without working? Now, I'm not saying you're going to take it. I'm just saying it sounds good to me. That you may feel something wrong with that. But this man worked one hour and got a full day pay. But the man who worked all day felt they should have got more because they labored all day. He's talking a spiritual lesson here. It doesn't matter how long you've been in the Lord, how long you've been laboring for the Lord. As long as you keep on laboring for the Lord, it doesn't matter if somebody just got saved an hour ago. They're going to receive eternal life just like you. You ought to thank God you're in heaven. You ought to thank God for his holy vision and his holy dream. Okay, if you didn't get that, I'm going to teach you this. Look at somebody and say, I hope you're learning these holy lessons. You see, you got to be a good example if you're going to serve the Lord. And purity and honesty and truth. Come on, somebody. And character. People are watching you. And they see Christ only in you. They don't know what Christ himself looks like. But if you say you're serving Christ, they're going to see Christ in you. But if they see you in the middle of the week, come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Oh, my Lord. Come on, somebody. I can't show up the Bible study. I can't show up for Sunday school. But I can be everywhere else. It can be snowing, raining, blizzard. It can be all kind of bad weather. But when your mind is made up, you're going shopping. Your mind made up, you're going to be somewhere. You know, I, I don't think I got but one or two amens from back here. Amen, amen, amen. Now let me see. What's on TV on Thursday night? Look at somebody and say, mm, that was a holy lesson. Mm -hmm. See, you know, if I don't preach it like this and you don't get it like this, then the blood will be on my hands. See, because the only thing that's going to sustain you and I is the word of God. Be patient with me. I want to talk about this man who, who, who many of you know, Nebuchadnezzar had a son named Belshazzar. Belshazzar. And this Belshazzar, after Nebuchadnezzar died, because he lost his mind, and God gave him his mind back. What a lesson to be learned. When, 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 when Nebuchadnezzar thought that he was the God of the earth, God, man, and he ruled the earth, and he had all power, and he did things with his own power, God let him know from Jump Street, I'm all power belong to me. Yeah. 
Look at somebody that all power belong to God. And it proves to Nebuchadnezzar that God ruled in the kingdom of man. God said, I'm going to have you eating grass like an ox. And your hair will grow like feathers, and your clothes will grow, your fingernail will grow like eagle claw. Not for seven days, not for seven weeks, but seven years. People had to lead it in and bring him back out. And so one day, he recognized who God was. Look at somebody and say, you got to recognize who God is. You got to recognize who God is. God is who he says he is. And he is a reward of them that diligently seek after him. Come on, somebody. Belshazzar, who was the son of Nebuchadnezzar, after his father died, he thought, I'm going to have an elaborate banquet. He had over a thousand dignitaries, people from all over his kingship. He had all the finest of food and ministers and the best of chefs, waiters and all the best of, of goblets and plates, platters full of food and they were just overwhelmed, and he stopped the crowd in the middle and began to say, we're going to toast to our God, the God of silver and the God of gold. That's a dangerous place to be in because he's getting ready to learn a holy lesson, faith. Look at somebody and say, Nebuchadnezzar is getting ready to learn a holy lesson. Not only Nebuchadnezzar, but Del Shazar is getting ready to learn our lesson. The Bible said while he was uh, exalting himself and proclaiming that he was great and he was having a good time at this feast and this banquet and he was getting his head bad and everybody getting drunk, all of a sudden out of nowhere, see God is not pleased with what's happening. He see exactly what's taking place in the land today. You may think God is happy, but God is not happy. Not with what he sees with his eyes and what he hears with his ears. This man, Belshazzar, thought that he was going to have a great time. But out of nowhere, whether it was in his mind's eye or the reality, he, he, he saw this huge hand writing on the wall. Now see, you just heard me say that, and that might not mean nothing to you. But if an angel showed up right now with his wings, if a big old hand reached in here and tried to swap somebody, Somebody going to get hurt on the way out that door. Now you're getting the gist of what I'm saying. Think about this. A big old hand writing on the wall. A message, a holy message to a man who thought that he would go into the temple, that he had robbed the people of Israel of all those holy garments, holy glasses, holy bowls. And he was going to eat out of them and drink out of them with his unholy self? Now you're getting the message. You can't live any kind of way and expect God to be pleased with it. If you want something from God, you got to live right. Oh, I know God sent his rain on the righteous as well as the unrighteous, and it sent forth the sun bright day on the righteous as well as the unrighteous. Huh. I'm going to be finished in a moment. This man didn't understand that God come to visit. When death come knocking, well, come on, somebody. 
You might not hear him when he knocking. You look up one day and you're strong and strappy. Come on, somebody. Your breasts are erected. Come on, son. They're fine in gravity. You're looking good and looking strong. And as the years slip away, and before you know it, you're slipping out of life's back door. Not knowing that your life is withering away and your head is turning gray. Your ears are hard of hearing. You're slow in speech and in thought and in idea. Your movement is a little slow. Your breathing has slowed down. Time is easing up on you. And death has come knocking. Well, come on, somebody. Well, you don't want to hear this. If the air had a roof, come on, somebody. Nobody couldn't make it through. But God has opened up the world so you can see into the heavens and give him the praise and give him the glory. Just do to his holy name. This man, Nebuchadnezzar's son, who was the next king, drinking out of holy garlands, drinking and eating out of holy plates, making a, a sacrilege unto God, the living God, and thinking that God won't in charge, he should have learned a lesson from his dad. Come on, somebody. You should learn a lesson from your mama. I didn't hear no amen, little amen. Mama should be teaching you something. Yes. Daddy should be teaching you something. Yes. And you learn a lot by the things that people don't say. Amen. Amen. You can learn a lot if you're paying attention. You can observe a person and there's power in observation. There's power in learning one, seeing one, and doing one. Amen. Amen. somebody say, See one? See one. <laughs> See one? See one. Do one? Do one. Teach one. Teach one. It's important. Because every day of your life you set an example. Amen. Your children, your grandchildren, Amen. your brothers, your sisters, somebody's always watching your life. Amen. Somebody's always observing how you carry yourself. Amen. How you carry your money, how you spend your money, how you treat one another, how you treat your son, how you treat your daughter, how you treat your son-in-law, your daughter-in-law, your brothers, your sister, how you treat your pastor, how you treat your first lady. You can't love the pastor and don't like the first lady. I told you last week me and her were one. I even gave you an example how we won. It's important that we understand these lessons. The Bible is full of holy lessons. This man can learn from his father. You better not take the glory from God because God is not one to be played with. I see my daddy eat grass and act a fool out in the yard. People had to bring him in. Something was wrong with his mind. When people don't do what God tells them to do, something wrong with their mind. Something wrong with their spirit. They can't praise God. They can't worship God. They can't glorify God. Something wrong. What are you saying, Pastor? You stomping your feet. I'm trying to get you to understand these holy lessons. This son could have learned from the father. But it looks to me he didn't learn nothing. Amen. That's what's wrong with our young men and our young women today that are gang banging. When you leave a child to his own demise. And I tell you, it just, it just bothers me when they know they're living a lifestyle. I mean living a lifestyle that's deadly. And then they think when they get killed that they're going to heaven. I'm sorry to tell you, somebody got somebody twisted. Their thinking is twisted. Many times, God will give us a chance. Many times, God will open doors for us. Many times, God will reveal things to you. We'll sit up in church and we'll look at what's on our iPod. 
this on our computer. And we will Twitter. See, I could take that from you till after the service, but I'm trying to get you to understand a holy lesson. Because you're going to miss something. I ain't picking on him. I'll pick on somebody who's trying to fall asleep. <laughs> See, because when you miss something, it might cost you your salvation. What are you saying, Pat? I'm saying this man, Belshazzar, Nebuchadnezzar's son, didn't learn the lesson that all power and all authority come from God Almighty. Get it in your head. All power is a dame of God. Oh, I know the judge got power. The mayor got power. The governor got power. The president got power, but their power can't be matched to God's power. And the power they got, God gave it to them. From Community Revival and Outreach Ministries, I trust that you enjoyed that wonderful service we just uh, had, and I trust the Lord that it touched your heart and your spirit, and it also inspired your soul. But beyond just listening to a message, we also ask you to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And how you do that, you just simply ask and bow before Christ. And if you're willing to lay hands upon your TV or bow your heads right where you are or sitting, if you just bow your head with me and we'll pray the prayer of faith. Heavenly Father, we truly thank you for all things in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That you forgive us of all our sins and have mercy upon our soul. And that not only you save us, O oh Lord, from our sins, but, O oh Lord, that you would sanctify our hearts and sanctify our souls as well as, O oh Lord, baptize us with the Holy Ghost and that with fire. We accept you, O oh Lord, into our hearts and our life. We confess our sins and we believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that God raised him from the dead. And by believing and accepting this, O oh Lord, we claim to be saved in his holy name. We give thanks and praise for all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I trust the Lord that your heart is fixed with the Lord and that your blessing will be assured and that you'll come out and fellowship with us. And if not with us, your, your own local church in your area and that God will be a blessing to you until we see you again. Take care and God bless. Bye-bye.